Welcome to Cops Under Fire. I'm your host, Bob France. Both online and on television, we're often reminded of the mistakes police officers seem to make while performing their jobs. The purpose of this show is to balance that perspective by highlighting the real threats and the real dangers that officers face every day when interacting with dangerous individuals. We believe it's important for you to see both sides and then ask yourself, would you want to do this job? We start our journey in St. Louis, where police thought they found a robbery suspect at an intersection, which rapidly led to a dangerous high-speed chase on a very thin street. Two on each is just off of us, southbound on Pennsylvania still. Officers have to be extremely vigilant in situations that involve high-speed pursuits in heavily populated areas. With so many parked cars and side streets, a pedestrian could accidentally put themselves in harm's way at any moment. The suspect slams on their brakes, making a cloud of smoke as they try to turn down an alleyway. However, the car is going too fast and it collides with the stone wall of the alley. Are they still behind it? How far ahead of them are they? one priority. He just hit an alley wall. We're heading west south. Correction, we're heading back north on Minnesota. We're at Chippewa. The car is dying. It's going like 10 miles per hour. Eastbound. Eastbound. We're eastbound right now on Chippewa. Mm -hmm. Tell them we're coming up to Pennsylvania. That's where, man. When was the robbery? We're at Pennsylvania now. Tell them the car is North on Pennsylvania. The car is going about 5 miles per hour. He's looking to bail. That's as far as that vehicle is now. Northbound on Pennsylvania from Chippewa, 1803. Now we're eastbound behind the 2900 block of Chippewa. He's trying, he's open door. North on Nebraska. The suspect exits the vehicle and points a pistol at the officers. They must now make split second decisions with the lives of the suspect, themselves, and civilians hanging in the balance. Shots fired. He's still running northbound on Nebraska up to Winnebago. He's armed with a black handgun, black jacket, gray pants. Two on, he's running east through the yards here by Winnebago, Pennsylvania. Hello? Hello, get their exact location. Get the 100 block. I just cars off turning to make Winnebago in Pennsylvania. Winnebago in Pennsylvania at 1804. 2-1, I no longer have eyes. We lost eyes. I got it. Get on the ground right now! 2-1, I got him in custody. Show me your fucking hands! Right now! Get cars up there and get 100 block. He's off. 2-1, call your location. 6500, the suspect's closing yard, blue jacket, blue black jacket, blue black jacket. 2-1 mini, I got him in custody. I'm in the eastern alley of the 3700 block of Nebraska. Alley, 37 block of the Brasco. 321 Mini, what is your location? 321 Mini, I'm in the car. Where are you shooting at us? If you could uh, set up traffic, go, go right, go right, go right. We're going to go. Another one ran? Two more. So 40, then 40 to King's Highway to Barn. This car 321 is going to be in this car, being transported to Barn. So we're going to go. Shut the fuck up. Two King's Highway to Barn, so 18 and 5. Two nine, I'm up in Arsenal, we're in the block ramp. Sorry, we're in the Arsenal, we're in the block ramp. 29. Oh, look. That's 
said two more ran that way, but only one, only one ran through the car. Yeah, this is the guy. Did Lion get shot? The arresting officers informed his partner had actually been injured in the shootout. Where's the gun at, you piece of shit? I didn't have no bullets. You were just shooting at us, you fucking idiot. I saw you. You tripping, man. We're still northbound on Grand. We're approaching Cherokee. And off car 321 is northbound Grand, approaching Cherokee, 1807. Still northbound on Grand, approaching Wyoming. <laughs> Hey, I got the gun. 301, ask him if it's easier for him to go to sloop. 321, man. 321, 321. We're good. I'm just shot in the eye. I'm good. We're going to farm. Yeah. I'm gonna be all right. I'm just pissed by my partner. I didn't even know. I was shooting at the guy and running. Approaching Russell. <clears throat> yeah, it was him. There was only one guy in the car this time. There's only one since yeah. large? Yeah, that was only the guy in the car. Okay. All right. Try to clear it up because they got people saying there's people running around everywhere. No, some guy said there's people. 240. In 321 Mini, there are no suspects at large. There was only one inside the vehicle, and we have him. 321 Mini, that's there. No suspects at large. 321 Mini, at large. Can you call my wife real quick and uh, let her know what's going on? I'll call her, bro. Hey, hey! Approaching LT. through park. And four to six is blocking 64. He was the only guy in the car. Yeah. No. And all cars are parking up parking and show. This was the only guy in the car. Okay. All right. have the first. The injured officer was grazed by glass and made a full recovery. No other injuries were reported, and the suspect, Darnay Ricks, was sentenced to 21 years for two counts of first-degree assault, two counts of armed criminal action, and one count of resisting arrest. Ricks was also sentenced an additional 10 years for armed criminal action and conspiracy to commit a felony in an armed robbery and carjacking for the robbery that took place three days prior to the shooting. Next stop is Fresno, California, where somebody had called 911, stating that a suspicious man was pacing in front of the Mukes Home Family Museum and had possibly broken in. When officers arrived on scene, they found this disturbed man acting erratically. It's over here. Don't you remember coming here when you were in elementary school? Just, just go ahead and stay out here, sir. See that? The officer signals to her partner, identifying a broken window, possibly indicating forced entry. She signals to another broken window, leading to the basement of the home. Is there a canine available in another unit? We got somebody that's uh, most likely inside the mute's home. Did we clear that? If you can real quick, I'll just keep an eye on this. Yeah, 
one Edward, uh, 13 to one David, he's coming out. Get on the ground! One Edward, 13, making contact with <laughs> not compliant. Get on the ground! Levántate, aquí! Levántate, tú ves lito. Venga por ellos de una vez. Venga por ellos, polices. Aquí sabes. ¿Qué quieres? Corte. Juez. ¿Qué quieres? Lay down. ¿Qué quieres, perra? You're gonna get tased. Venga la verga. Lay down. Venga, mira. Okay, ugly, lay down. Mira, puta. ¿Qué? Quítate el uniforme, los zapatos, pendeja. ¿Qué me haces? Get on the ground. ¿Qué me haces? Get on the ground. ¿Qué? We're going to tase you. The suspect places his hands behind his back, potentially giving himself up or potentially reaching for a concealed weapon. Uh, he's, uh, we're in the back of the mute home. Get down. Get down. Don't come to me. Get on the ground. On the ground. On the ground. If you blink, you'll miss it. The assailant has ripped the taser prongs from his torso and has picked up a hammer from the bench. Drop it! Drop it! Two Edward, he's got a hammer! Non-lethal action has proven ineffective and the assailant is now charging at the officer's partner with violent intent. One Edward, uh, 13 shots fired. We need EMS and a supervisor. <laughs> The suspect, Edgar Morphin Mendoza, was pronounced dead on the scene, and no other injuries were reported. Now let's head to Indianapolis, where officers were conducting a firearms investigation and were met with a hostile suspect who did not plan on cooperating. He's going to be a shooting suspect. He might be taken off. He's going to be, he's going to take. Westbound on 30th, from post. We got a lot of movement in the car. Uh, hold on a second. No, 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 no. He's going to go uh, west on 30th. He's got a slow roll on him. He's going to be Fuck! Hey, relax, 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 relax. In the minivan are at least two confirmed suspects who are armed. Get the grass, get the grass. In high stress situations like a firefight, it is important to have more than one officer on scene. Not only does it allow them to keep each other safe, it allows them to keep each other in check when logic and reason is taken over by adrenaline. We're okay. We're okay. Hey, we got one gone. There's a male. Driver, put your fucking hands up. Driver, hands up they has got their helicopter just uh, setting this way, information. Clear. Truck is, truck is clear. We get it. Just take traffic and arc is clear. We're en route with two cops that are shot. Hey, we'll move up. Just so can first. we please split to the find the suspect in the first session uh, to the, the hospital? The split the channels. All right, we're going to move up to clear the car. Can I be as clear of our switched over and told? Go ahead. 
He's out. He's out. We got a The suspect, Daniel Yefter Gabri Iwet, was pronounced dead at the scene, and both officers were released with non life threatening injuries. The passenger fled on foot during the shootout and was later apprehended on an unrelated narcotics warrant. Now let's turn to San Diego, California, where San Diego Police Dispatch received a call about a car that was stolen three days prior and had now found the location of the car. The caller said her car was stolen by Curtis Harris and was sitting in a grocery store's parking lot. However, she couldn't go any closer because Curtis was armed with a gun. Three officers arrived on scene and entered the grocery store in search of Mr. Harris. Let's rewind that back. The sergeant meets the suspect as he exits the building and takes off. Hey, 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 come here. Come here, hey. We got to do something, buddy. For only a few frames, we can see the suspect has drawn his gun. He reaches over the wall and fires at the sergeant. An officer approaching from the other direction opts to draw his baton, but quickly realizes that he is outmatched. The suspect turns on him, gun drawn, point blank in his direction, and miraculously, the officer slides onto his back, ducking under the line of fire. Where's Sarge? Everybody okay? Where's Sarge? Hey, watch him, watch him, watch him. Sarge. The officers retrieved the gun from Mr. Harris's hands and gave him medical care until paramedics arrived. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. The sergeant suffered a gunshot wound to the head, but was conscious and speaking on the way to the hospital. He is still receiving medical care for his injuries. We've taken a close look at the daily challenges and dangers faced by our police officers. It's essential to understand the full scope of their responsibilities and the risks they encounter while protecting our communities. Remember, every incident we see on the news is just one part of a much larger story. We hope this episode has provided a balanced perspective and given you a deeper appreciation for the complexities of law enforcement. Stay safe and join us next time as we continue to explore the realities of policing. If any officers watching feel like their story needs to be heard, you can email us at stories at watchtrueblue.com and your story may be featured on an episode of Cops Under Fire.